happy to introduce to you Josh, who has been working on the first part of the name of the school, which is in four, I guess. And he's been studying how do you inform people in presentation situations. And this is kind of a, for you, you know, program, you know, recursive algorithm. He ends up in a strange position because he's going to talk about how to make presentation and the difficulty with the tools that we use today for that. And now he's going to make that presentation with those tools, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of end up in this loop. <laughs> but I'm quite sure he will be able to do that in a, in a very nice way. So, please. Thank you, so my grandfather often tells me a story about a swimming coach who coached many of his athletes to national and Olympic championships, but who himself couldn't swim. The reason I bring up this story is because as I was preparing for this presentation, I realized that I feel a lot like this swim coach. I know a lot about presentations. I've read a lot of things. I've spoken with a lot of people about this topic. And here I am making a presentation about presentations. So after a year of study, I know a lot, but realized that I may not be able to practice everything that I preach here tonight. Still, I look forward to your critique and questions and comments in the end um, as I go through this process of learning how to swim. Anyway, let's get down to business. I'm Josh, and I care about presenters and audiences. <laughs> in the beginning, people simply made speeches. This still happens today. A speech is simply where someone stands in front of a room and talks about a subject. But generally, today, we see a lot, of, a lot of other tools used in these presentation situations. As time progressed, people found another form of, of presentation that I'm sure we're all familiar with. Some people, today are talk, some people today are calling this chalk and talk. Basically, the idea is that you stand in front of a room with a whiteboard or chalkboard or any of this sort of thing, and you talk about your subject, and if you need to illustrate a concept, you write one more. <coughs> Simple as that. I'm sure we've seen a lot of presentations like this. As technology has progressed, however, we've seen a, a, a number of new tools. First, there was the slide projector. The slide projector is, is something that's probably familiar to most of us. The way this worked was they used photographic slides. And what happened, in, in order to make a, present, a, a, a slide projector-based presentation, the presenter prepared their speech, and handed it off to a graphic designer, who then took the content of that speech and translated it into graphic images that help explain what the topic is. As technology has further progressed, we've seen tools like the overhead projector. And the overhead projector was great because it's, it was a lot like this slide projector, except now you can edit your slides on the go. So you can write on a slide and change your content. If there's a question, you can illustrate your illustrations. Another great thing about slide projectors is that it allowed people to create their own slides. All you needed to do was put your graphic on paper, put some transparency paper in the, the copy machine, and press print. And then you've got a whole set of slides. This is where the idea of slides has come from. And today we use tools like Microsoft's PowerPoint. I'm sure this is familiar to nearly everyone in this room. Microsoft PowerPoint. Um, there is one example of this sort of software. Tonight I'm using Apple's Keynote. There are a number of, of software packages that do this task of making slides. And I'll refer to this sort of software as Slideware. Slideware is a dream for slide creators. It makes it really, really easy. You have complete, complete freedom and control over how you lay out your content. That's great, right? So now we have complete control over our slides and how we put them how we put content on our slides. Each person can make their own, can put their own information however they would like. So presentations are definitely improving, right? <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> In a two week long study that I carried out with my friend and colleague, Aparna Pandam, I found that people don't actually enjoy PowerPoint presentations today. I'm sure a lot of you saw out in the halls, um, this was a study where basically we left out big sheets of paper with pens and tiny little prompts that prompt some sort of question. This one said, PowerPoint rocks, in the form of a slide. One instructor, one instructor wrote about not, not using PowerPoint anymore. She said, and I quote, never again. 
I bored myself so badly with PowerPoint. I wanted to sleep in my, le my own lectures. That's <laughs> Others complain that PowerPoint constrains flow of thought, minimizes interactive possibilities, and thought that the default settings were, quote, brain dead. So what's so bad about SlideWare? There are a lot of things that are wrong with SlideWare. I could probably talk to you all for a long time about this subject. We could probably have conversations about this, and we should afterwards. But I'm going to focus on two problems. The first thing I'm going to talk about is SlideWare's emphasis on text entry. SlideWare makes it really easy for people to add text to slides. And the second thing I'm going to focus on is the emphasis on creation of slides at all. Let's first talk about text on slides. In 2001, Mayer et al. Found, that, found the redundancy effect. And that says that if there's information on a slide and the presenter says it, the audience member is less likely to recall the fact right? <laughs> than, if, than, if the, than if the presenter simply said the fact or if it was simply projected. Now this is pretty incriminating evidence. This, this tells us that text on slides is a bad thing, but I think there is even further evidence um, that I found that I call the, the teleprompter effect. What happens in the teleprompter effect is that a presenter prepares their slides and prepares all their points on a slide. And when a slide is used in this manner, the presenter's back <laughs> turns to the audience. Turning one's back to the audience is a presentation faux pas. When I turn my back to you, I make the point that the most important information right now is on the slide. The other information, the information that's coming from maybe your faces or your arms if you have a question, that doesn't matter. What really matters is that I stay on track because this is what I prepare. This really frightens uh, audience members. It makes, them, it makes it really hard for them to ask questions or stop the presentation because they feel like they just don't want to stop the presenter's flow. 